I just received Fantastic Four issue number two, or by legacy numbering, number 695. Written by Ryan North and illustrated by Ebon Coella. As much as it pains me to say, this fell short of my expectations. Here's a quick one-sentence overview. The plot could have been great, but was undermined by poor characterization. Warning, there will be spoilers. As I said, the plot was, for the most part, fine. Not as good as the first issue, but still interesting. Apparently, when Victor Von Doom first came to America, he sort of befriended an old woman named Mary. She was kind to him and fed him when he was at State University, and as a reward, he promised to always take care of her. To do this, he built his first Doombots to protect her. Here is problem number one. A failure to understand the history of the character. Doom was already making his robots back in Latveria before he even came to the U.S. In fact, his skill in robotics is what prompted the man from State U to go to Latveria to invite him to the university in the first place. So saying Doom's first Doombots were built for an old woman is simply incorrect. But there are bigger fish to fry here, and I don't like it when people get bogged down with continuity, so I'll let that one go with a warning. I also will delve deeply into Dr. Doom in an upcoming video, so I don't want to do that here. Trust me, it'll be great. A one-stop shop for all your Lord of Lotveria needs. You won't want to miss it. The story continues with the Doombot eventually replicating itself and its programming in an effort to keep Mary safe, until the Doombots eventually make up the entire town's population. So little old Mary is surrounded by guardian robots built by the world's most dangerous threat, and she doesn't even know it. Pretty neat concept, if you ask me. Reed and Susie eventually come upon this and uncover everything I just explained. They begin to talk to Mary when they discover that she is a Doombot too. It turns out that years ago she was terribly injured, and her original guardian Doombot then took it upon itself to take her inside of it and use itself as a mobile hospital. Eventually, Mary died, but the robot didn't realize this and continued living as her. So the whole town had become robots looking out for another robot. When Reed and Susie discover this, they defeat the robots and reprogram them. Now the Doombots can go about still being normal people, but they don't have the Kill Fantastic Four directive. All is happy in the end. Not bad, all things considered. Not bad at all. In fact, a pretty good plot. North even took a page out of John Byrne's book, a page Byrne used at least twice. Issue 241 of Fantastic Four and issue 21 of Alpha Flight both feature people who are dead, but kept alive, or at least animated, by the suits they wear. I'm not saying North taking this plot device is bad. I liked it. If you're going to take from anyone, take from the best. But this does lead to my biggest problem with the story. If you're going to go back and take plot points from Byrne, that means you know Burn exists. And if you know Burn exists, you have no excuse for why the characterization is so bad, which is where North's story fails, and is what I will go into right now. Ryan North got Susan all wrong. Susan is not Reed's handler as she appears in this issue. The whole time, she seems to be wrangling her addle-brained goof of a husband, making decisions and helping him through simple daily tasks like eating. This is not Susan! And what is this Dr. Susan Storm Richards garbage? When did she become a doctor? And better still, what's with the hyphenated last name? Susan doesn't do that. It seems to me someone needs to crack open Fantastic Four issue 245 again. This, more than any other issue, illustrates exactly who Susie is. And this is what I don't get. The greatest FF writer of all time, John Byrne, wrote a veritable character bible about her. 245 tells you everything you need to know about Susan. So why is it so hard to write her properly? Is Ryan North unaware of this issue? In which case, he isn't doing his job as a writer by knowing what came before him. Or did he simply ignore it, which makes him not only lazy, but also an egotistical plankton chip who thinks he knows better than Masters of the Craft? Or perhaps it's a third option. He's playing with the toys the way he got them. To that I say, that ship has sailed, pal! Long gone are the days where you had to write the characters the way they were written before you. Just look at Reed. One day he was normal, the next he was autistic. Who's to say Ryan North can't change it back just as suddenly? I, for one, would certainly not stand in his way. I don't know what North's problem with characterization is, but he needs to get his act together. In issue 245, Susan is being interviewed by Barbara Walker, a TV hostess. 
Ms. Walker asks if it's true that Susan has taken a subservient role to her husband by taking his name. Here's what the true Susan had to say about taking the name Richards. Quote, Oh, I'd hardly call it subservient, Barbara. I love my husband very much, and I know it makes him proud that I have chosen to take his name, just as I am proud to bear it. End quote. Walker pushes further, saying, quote, Those do not sound like the words of a modern liberated woman, Susan. End quote. To which Susie replies, quote, Really? I know who I am, so I'm not a prisoner of words or labels. End quote. What more needs to be said, people? When Susan married Reed, she left behind her past as a storm and took her husband's name with pride. There is no way she would hyphenate her name. That's just a fundamental misunderstanding of the character. If this isn't the type of female you want to write, fine. Don't write Susan, then. There are lots of women in the Marvel Universe that probably are perfect for the type of female character you want to write. But don't shoehorn Susan into a role she was never meant to fit. He got Susan correct with regards to her being a loving wife and a capable, intelligent woman. But she isn't the brains of the outfit, nor is she the lead decision maker. And she isn't Reed's handler. Ugh! And this isn't to say I don't like strong, independent female characters. I am a John Byrne fan, after all. Nobody writes stronger female characters than him. And my favorite female superhero is She-Hulk, for crying out loud. The strongest, most independent woman in comics I can think of. But Susan isn't that type. Her strength comes from a more maternal, dependent place. There's nothing wrong with this. North doesn't seem to understand that. But wait, there's more! Now we get to the thing that absolutely killed the story for me. The handling of Reed Richards' character. I have already made a 20-minute diatribe on who Reed Richards is in the first video I put out, which I implore all of you to watch. It is the only video you need to completely understand the character of Reed Richards. In fact, defending the honor of Marvel's greatest hero was why I initially started this channel. To quickly summarize what I said in my other video, Reed Richards is not autistic. He does not talk like a robot. He does not have issues with social skills. He is very personable, and he is incredibly caring. If you take issue with any of this, I refer you to my other video, which explains all of it in excruciating detail. If you still have problems with this, leave a comment and I can explain in even further detail. I have no problem answering genuine questions. But what does Ryan North do? Make Reed the autistic weirdo I mentioned a couple minutes ago! Case in point. The first thing we get out of Reed Richard's mouth this issue is the sentence, quote, I don't believe this sloppy Joseph sandwich is nutritionally complete. End quote. What in the world is this? Since when did Reed not use nicknames like Joe? Especially since his best friend is a man he calls Ben, his other teammate is called Johnny, and he even calls his wife Sue from time to time, even in this issue. He doesn't exclusively call them Benjamin, Jonathan, or Susan, so why would he call a sloppy Joe a sloppy Joseph? Are you telling me a 40-year-old man, who by this time is the father of two kids, has never heard of a sloppy Joe before? How foolish do you think I am? How foolish do you think Reed is? It is poor writing that makes Reed look like a visitor from another world, rather than the world's second smartest man. Then Reed's continuing to introduce himself as Reed Richards to Doombots. Just silly. He knows they're a threat. He even calls them the biggest threat after Doom himself. So why would he keep saying, Hi everybody, I'm Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four! <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to his character. Or any character, really. Does he want to die? Does he want to endanger himself and his wife? Then why would he keep putting himself out into danger when there are more rational ways to go about the situation? What is up with the need to tear down established, intelligent characters by making them tweaky weirdos? Mr. Fantastic is getting what I call the Donatello treatment. A once intelligent, tough, capable character is now nothing more than an awkward brain. What's next? Are they going to give Reed glasses? Why stop there? Give him buck teeth and suspenders while you're at it. And give him a catchphrase like, Did I do that? Just listen to how he was explaining to a police officer what had just happened to him and his wife. Quote, Listen, everyone else here is a doombot and... End quote. Then he is interrupted by the cop, but continues with this. Quote, Did, did you not hear me? They are all robots built by Dr. Doom and... End quote. From here, he is cut off by his so much more socially capable wife, Susan. 
Why is Reed acting like a fool? Why doesn't he see he sounds like a crazy person? He knows the robots look like normal people again. So why is he trying to convince this random cop that all isn't as it appears to be in such cryptic, frantic statements? Who out there in comic book reader land has ever seen Reed so frazzled that he couldn't express himself in an articulate, normal manner? Especially by something as simple as robots. He is Earth's ambassador to the universe. This is not the Reed Richards we know. This is an imposter. And since when did being on the spectrum mean you can't be a normal person? Why paint all autistic people as robotic weirdos that can't hold normal conversations? Plenty of autistic people seem perfectly normal on the outside. It's on the inside where things get different. I could go on and on, but I would just be beating a dead horse. Not that I don't like driving points into the ground, but as I mentioned, I already did it in my previous video about Reed Richards, and I don't like being redundant. Boy, do I wish Ryan North put as much care into Reed and Susie as he did the thing in issue one. That was a very good thing story. This was just trash, character-wise. But let's move on to the cover. More of Alex Ross's self-congratulatory use of a costume he designed that doesn't appear in the book. Get with the program, Alex. This is indicative of a phenomenon jocular John Byrne calls the singer being more important than the song. Because Alex Ross's name is on it, he can get away with drawing characters any way he likes. Similar to this image of the FF drawn by Barry Windsor Smith, which looks like bad fan art of the Fantastic Four if they were all inbred. If it wasn't Barry Windsor Smith, it would have been laughed out of the building. But because BWS is written on it, it's hailed as good art. No! A name doesn't automatically make a good image. This leads back to Alex Ross. If your image on the cover looks nothing like the characters in the story, it's a bad cover. Technically, his work is nearly flawless, but it isn't indicative of the characters in the story and works only to stroke his own ego. Ergo, bad cover. Ebon Coella's interior artwork was fine, with the exception of Reed's stretching powers. When Reed stretched, Coella drew him spindly and thin, which isn't accurate. Reed's limbs become tubular, not stringy. He also made the easiest mistake when drawing Mr. Fantastic, thinking of him as Plastic Man. I have already gone over this in another video, but it bears repeating. Mr. Fantastic stretches. Plastic Man changes shape. You can point to early Kirby issues when Reed turned his body into a net, but that was before Kirby got the hang of the character. That's why I always go back to Burn. He synthesized and perfected what characters looked like and how they acted. According to Byrne, Mr. Fantastic can elongate his body. That's it. He can't shift his eyeballs down to his fingertips just to look through things. He's not made of clay. His body works the same way ours does. It's just stretchy. And he rarely stretches his neck. That just looks goofy. Plastic Man, on the other hand, can probably do all of these things. But he's a different character with a completely different tone. Knowing the difference between Plaz and Reed is very important especially when you are the artist on a comic that is considered in continuity. But I'm sure the blame doesn't fall solely on Coella for this, so I won't be too hard on him. And he did make Reed's white hair wrap all the way around his head, not just sit at his temples. Very good on you, Mr. Coella. I apologize if I come off a little strong, but these characters mean more to me than most people do. I truly cherish them, and it physically pains me to see them treated this way. Honestly, it's libelous in my eyes. Ryan North left a wonderful impression on me with his first outing as writer. I couldn't say enough good things about Fantastic Four number one. But if this is how he writes Reed and Susie, we are in for a contentious relationship, Ryan and I. Fantastic Four number two had an intriguing plot but was poorly executed, which is sad. I don't want to be negative. Look at my review for issue one. When I see high spots, I sing it from the rooftops. And as much as I dislike the word, I'm not a toxic fan. I can accept change, and I can accept that things aren't going to go my way all the time. But there is a difference between something not going my way and something being done wrong. The characterizations in issue two were wrong, plain and simple. This just did not meet the mark. I pray issue three will be better. I thank you very much for listening. Until the next video!